Uh, okay, this is a, a quick history lesson. Um, I was really interested. I, I kind of felt that, you know, localism and geography, that it's a very, very Irish thing. And then hearing Matthew and Gibson talking about Northumbria and that. This is Cork here on the map. And when people from Cork imagine the map of Ireland, they have a little bit here which is Cork and everywhere else is not Cork. Um, so that's kind of, um, that's, that's the geographical setting. I actually come from the most beautiful part, which is down here, it's called Kerry. Um, and we repeatedly beat Cork um, in, uh, it's West Cork with Wellington. <laughs> okay, so um, RCDP was established in 1994, so we're, we're coming up to 22, 23 years now. It's part of the National CDP program. And, um, you know, people talked this morning about, you know, some of the problems in the 80s um, and the moving of communities. The community development program was, was largely in response to kind of uh, problems that governments actually admitted they couldn't solve. They needed communities to be involved to solve. And it did grow out of the Department of Social Welfare. And I thought, it's a really innovative one because the Social Department of Social Welfare paid out all of the benefits to a whole load of welfare recipients. And the CDP program was an effort to put that in within communities and try and stop those communities being recidivist receivers of income benefits, to try and change poverty before it began to happen, to try and change the things that caused that poverty. Um, by 2010, there were 180 community development projects across the country. They were in islands, they were in rural areas. There's a huge quack of them up here in Dublin um, and dotted all around the country. There were 11 in Cork City. Um, and then in the uh, kind of the age of austerity, um, and there, there is also a thing about never wasting a good crisis, deciding that, you know, Equality is too expensive uh, when we have an economic crisis. Um, so, um, one of the suggestions uh, by a, a fairly right-wing think tank, I would think, said to amalgamate local community development projects um, into larger county or city structures to become the LCDP program. And local development and community development are really, really different. They they sometimes work with the same groups, but they're very, very different aims. And I suppose what, what animated the community development project was around equality, inclusion, disadvantage, poverty, um, targeted programs. 25 CDPs survived to remain independent, self-governed community organizations, because we fought against some of the amalgamations, and we were one of them. Um, and I suppose then there was a, an effort to try and create an identity in this very new world as we were now lo longer part of a national program. Um, and Diane Hills was invited to speak to a lot of community development projects at the time and, and how we would try and fight this challenge. Um, she's from the Tavistock Institute and she talked about anchor organisations, community anchor organisations who, you know, have a very strong focus grounding in their local community, really, really deep roots um, and, sorry, um, but also link with the statutory agencies um, and are managed by local people. So there's a, you know, there's a, there's a real hub um, and then there's a reaching out from that, but there's a real strength in a depth of relationships, history, network building um, that people are able to draw on. And so when we created our new identity, it was about the anchor, but the anchor is surrounded by cherry blossom because Balfahan was one of the first built uh, communities in, by the local authority. And it was beautifully built. I have to say the local planner was amazing. Really, really wide roads and then cherry blossoms all the way on those roads. So for three weeks in the spring, it is the most beautiful place on earth. Even better than Kerry sometimes. Okay, so these are some of the guidelines we've come up over the 22 years. And we do, we do community childcare, community education, community development, community health. We work with older people. We work with the direct accommodation um, hostel for asylum seekers. We work with people in sheltered housing. Um, and we also have some people who work with, with youth projects. So that's a range of kind of possibilities that the university might be coming to the CDP. 
So for community groups that say to value what you do and recognise your own worth, and particularly having come out of 10 years of really struggling to survive, accept and maintain links with the university that actually make sense to you, that add value, that, that help you advance the cause that you're interested in. And if it doesn't seem to be doing that, well then just abandon them, I would say. Um, and, and go for the hierarchy, or go for the equality rather than the hierarchy. Because if, if universities need you, uh, well then you, you, you're starting from a, from a strong space. And I would say that the way that can be done is, is actually writing a clear contract. And often you have contracts with students who are on placement or maybe with researchers. And actually I think you need maybe also to have a contract with whoever the fostering department is. Um, and um, yeah, in the middle of the Celtic Tiger, one of the things that became very common was drive-by valuations. So the local estate agent or auctioneer would drive by a particular road and say, yeah, that house is worth 230,000 or whatever. Um, and it really struck me as a really interesting phrase of pretending to do something but actually not doing it. And I would say to community groups, not to accept drive-by relationships um, with academic staff or institutions. Don't accept students being parked off-site, out of sight, and becoming completely the responsibility of the community project. Um, because if, like, a lot of the reasons you'd have students on placement is because they need practical knowledge, they need guided practice experience of what it is they're learning on their academic course. Um, and their, their teachers, their, um, their placement coordinators need actually to be, to be visiting, to be interacting, to make sure that's happening. Um, so it's not a, a kind of a, you know, a park them with the babysitter who happens to be the community project in this case and walk away for the three months or six months. Um, okay, so academics and why they need us. Um, they do need the, the, a lot of professions, social work, childcare, um, social science, uh, social care, um, need the opportunity for students to practice in a supported and in a safe environment. Kind of the learning by doing, having learnt from what the theoretical perspectives are. In terms of research, it's kind of real world application of some of the, the ideas or the insights. Um, and, and communities become a place where you can connect, you know, what's been thought uh, and hopefully what's, what's been fostered as a kind of a, a practice. Um, and also because of impact, which a lot of people uh, know from their rounds of promotion or applications for funding, um, that impact criteria are included in a lot of these. So there's a very small... Um, a graphic from Lego Academics. I don't know if you've come across it, but it's, it's always a source of great uh, entertainment. And so there you have that kind of evil dinosaur, uh, but it's the ref has returned. Um, I think the ref is the, the bane of a lot of people's lives in the UK, but you have similar stuff in, in Ireland. Okay, so this is just to give you a, a flavor of what kind of placements we have. So from starting at second level, then the third level ones, um, and then, you know, kind of placement visits um, and learning, um, what do you call it? So what we've learned from that is um, that they need to be a value of us, to us, as well as to the university. So if it's something we want, we'll engage with. Um, that, that, you know, this that it brings a validation of, of the work that we do. Um, and also that we learn about the theory um, and the, the ideological perspectives. Because I think that's really important that community groups keep on checking back on their own practice, um, on what's happening, on what new kinds of ideas are being developed and how we can implement those. Um, and I suppose the kind of use the ones that add value and then abandon maybe the ones that don't. And my example is of um, help promotion students. Um, for three years in a row, we, had, we were asked to take a placement visit from first year help promotion students. Happened on the first week of November. Those students started uh, straight out of second level in October. Um, so they, they had at most four weeks of teaching 
probably eight hours. Um, and they were going between health sciences and then this kind of community perspective on health. And so all we ever got was a group of students who sat there who didn't interact and we'd put three or four hours work into it. So we did it for two years and try and change it, nothing. Went back to the course coordinator and on the third year I asked someone else to do it and facilitate it and their response was the same and then we gave up doing it. And then two years later, <coughs> the same department came back to us um, and they asked us to do the same session but for fourth year students and that was much more interesting. And now we do it with some of the people we cooperate with on Healthy Cities and in, in health promotion. So there are innovative collaborations possible that really help both. And this is one of them. Um, I talked about the, the kind of threat CDPs were under. There's a big long letter here which is using the academic um, contacts that we had in the CDP to write a letter of protest around the closing down of the CDP programme. There are academics there from UCD, from Maynooth, um, from UL, from UCC. Um, John Baker's name is up there. Um, and Dennis Barrett's name is up there. Um, so it was like, who could we draw together to sort of say, we were being told international expertise says this programme is not good value for money and it doesn't do the things it says it will. Um, and here's a response from a whole load of people in that field saying, actually, you're wrong. It's a really good program. You should be keeping it. And of all the things that we did in the fight to keep the CDP program, that letter was the one that stung the department most. They kept on responding to it, um, which was nice. They still closed the program. The other thing we did was to work with an academic, an economist in the local uh, CIT. And he did um, a study on the economic assessment of the value of the 18 CDPs in Cork and Kerry. So using the knowledge, the, the relationships we had to do something that we, we thought was really, really important. So, you know, I think it needs to work for both um, academics and for, um, for the community groups. The learning neighbourhoods, um, if you look closely at that photograph, you'd see Siobhan is there, Seamus is there, Dennis is there, I'm in there somewhere. And all of the groups that foster and support learning around Balafahan are in there. That was gathered on the morning. So there's another positive collaboration between ACE and UCC, the City Council, the ETB, UNESCO, and Balafahan. Um, and then this is one that we're really interested in, the MBA Trust. Uh, the graduates of the MBA and UCC have worked with SESCA, which Dennis and I are both very strongly committed to. Um, and they're going to work with us in the next year to, um, to create um, an equality charter for local employers and businesses. Um, and that's around supported employment opportunities or maybe supported social, social economy opportunities. Um, and then developing that charter that says this employer is working really, really hard at trying to create um, a social uh, dividend from the profit-based work that they do. Um, so it's a really interesting kind of collaboration for us. And then I'll just tell you who's in SESCA, because I, I mentioned it before. So you have the Social Inclusion Services in HSE, Balfour and Toker CDP, you have the Before Five Family Centre, Churchfield Community Trust, um, which works with uh, people who've just come out of prison, um, uh, Cork Gay Project, Link um, lesbian, uh, Project for Lesbian and Bisexual Women, Man Community Development Project, Mayfield Community Development Project, Mahalmara, which is a boat building project that's around social economy and supported education and employment, NASC, the Irish Immigration um, and Refugee Support Service, uh, Niche Community Health Project, uh, who's, uh, I'm after, I can't even read my own writing now. It's probably right at the end. Um, so so from, if you looked at the map of disadvantage in Cork City, and if you looked at the map of where those projects are, they exactly match. So, so we'll be working with the MBA Trust to try and create employment opportunities for people um, in those communities. 
Okay? All right? Um, so th these are the kinds of research that we don't like doing, research that's about, um, you know, the geography of poverty that continually tells a story about a community um, that, that kind of, you know, um, singles it out for stigma on a whole variety of ways. One of the ones we were asked to do once and we turned down was um, um, uh, smoking in working class communities. It was like, away with you. Um, and, and, but the, the ones that we do tend to invest in are participative. So this is uh, older people in Balafahan. What do they think about aging in their community? We employed a researcher. That researcher trained six older people who then did the research. Um, and then the community organisations that had commissioned it went on to work on the recommendations. And then the last one, which was also participant research, was the All-Ireland Traveller Health Study. And there is a real, di like the, the story this tells of travellers' lives is absolutely stark. It, like it's, it's horrifying, the, you know, kind of multiple levels of suicide, the early mortality, um, the, the really, really high unemployment, the huge amount of social problems. Most of the research and most of the feedback was collected by travellers and traveller organisations directed the research process. So it wasn't about settled people looking from the outside saying, God, Jesus, the travellers, like, look, look at all that. It was, um, and it's, it's become a huge campaigning tool around, you know, we have such strong evidence that travellers, um, like, just get so little chances in this society. Um, but it was, it was very much directed by traveller experience and information very much collected by travellers. Okay, all right.